Well, last week I pulled these irons off of the original driver's box, and these were the two iron pieces that went on the inside of the rear framing of that box. I was of the mind at that time that these were probably original, and I went through to show you how these were lined up pretty close to the double space holes on the front irons. But through the process of sandblasting this, which actually lets me see a little more closely, I've changed my mind that I don't think these were original. Do I have the right to change my mind? Well, it's because of the irregularity of these holes, which I'll show you as compared to the irons on the front framing of this box. Well, as we look at the holes on this front iron, you can see they're just drilled for the bolt, not squared out for the head of the carriage bolt. And they're very uniform right in the center of this iron. And as I put this old iron that came off of the back frame up against the front iron, even though the spacing this way is somewhat close, you can see how off-centered these are. And these have been squared out to accept the shoulder of the carriage head whereas they should be just round and the carriage bolt should come in this direction, not this direction. And you can also see the top hole here, which would have bolted through the cross frame. It's way off center, and we'll find that that is also true on the cross frame itself, how off center those holes are. So the more I study the craftsmanship of the patch job, versus the craftsmanship of whoever built this coach initially, I'm seeing two different craftsmen and two different levels of skill. These irons that went on the inside, I am more convinced now, were of the second craftsman that did the patching and repair work and not the craftsman that had built this coach initially, which is indicated by some of the other iron work on this vehicle. And as we look at the iron on the end of these cross braces, we can see that there wasn't a lot of care to make sure that these holes were centered up either. So my speculation is from this vantage point, looking back and trying to figure out this puzzle, I think the box on this driver's seat must have been broken as well in the wreck. You know, we've already kind of determined that the back end of this coach took quite an impact from the blow, but I think because of these cross frame irons, this box also must have been hit right or left, and these irons were put in to try to stabilize it, short of taking it all apart and reframing it like it probably could have been. This probably functioned, but that's why I'm more and more convinced that these were repair irons. Now, do I use them? That's the question. So where I am at this point in this whole process, I have eliminated a lot of the patch irons that were outside, backside, in the back, on the framework, all that type of stuff I'm not gonna put back in. This is one set of repair irons that I think I will leave. A Couple different reasons. It will add stability to this box if it were ever wrecked again. Hope it never happens. But these irons will be inside the driver's box. We're gonna have new wood on the outside on the back. We're gonna have new wood on the outside on the sides. There's gonna be a new driver's footboard. These irons, they're, they're gonna be pretty well hidden. But they will be a telltale story of when the wreck happened, whenever that was. So it's part of the history of this coach. It's somewhat unknown, but it is, I think, more and more verifiable that this coach was wrecked. Obviously, I think we could say at this point. So I'm going to leave these irons on as a keepsake memory of the repair work of whatever blacksmith craftsman that went through the trouble to fix it I'm gonna leave his signature on this coach as well through leaving these irons. So there is another benefit that I'm gonna make use of in these irons. When this coach was put back to where it was functional again, 
everything it was more intact than when I got it. I think that's pretty obvious. So these irons are going to help me determine where these old back panel boards used to be. With these holes and the holes that are in that old wood, I'm going to pin that wood back into where it was so I can kind of get a placement of the width of these boards and just where they were set, I think, on that original coach because of these irons. So I can take the remnants of where this used to be underneath this iron and kind of figure out about where that board would have been somewhere about in there. And I think this one's going to go here. Like so. Somewhere in there. Looks like that one's about next. I think that one's about right. I think that kind of gives me the placement of where these original boards used to be. So now that we have this kind of in relationship to where the real body would have been, it was difficult to get this measurement because that was all gone on as it came in. So our first board is going to be about 11 and a half inches it looks like. So these are the old framing off of the old box. This is inside and rear. So this spot here that had the double bolts actually correlates with the split in the boards here. There's going to be one bolt for this board and one bolt for this board. So that explains why the double bolt and perhaps a single bolt. Kind of a mystery why there isn't a double bolt here and why there isn't a double bolt here. And then this would be the old framework that I've replaced here. Again, the double bolt lines right up with where this joint of the two boards would have been, one bolt in each. So that kind of makes sense. I'm not sure why there's just one down here. These cross irons really do serve a good purpose in helping me position these boards where they were originally. This is what will all be seen. And again, this will be just from the inside of the driver's box, even hidden behind the boot. But it will still leave evidence of part of the history of this coach, which I think it deserves some of that remembrance as well. So I've been pondering a little closer the old framework here and the location of these bolts. Well this bolt seems to go through the bottom portion of this second board. These two bolts here seem to span the joint and this third one is really close to being to the bottom of this one. It's almost right in the middle of the joint. Uh, I think I have my measurement's pretty close, but you know they're pretty rotted, so I might be just a fuzz off on this one. So it's kind of leaving me as a quandary is, how is this bottom board attached? 
Well, I got to looking at this framework and there's three fasteners that are down here on the bottom that I think accommodate this bottom board. And then in the top here, there's also some remnants of some fasteners. This end is a little more rotted, but I'm gonna dig these out and see whether they are a nail or whether they are a screw. So they're right here on the bottom and I am expecting that they would be nails. Uh, it would be the least expensive and the quickest application, but I'm gonna find that out just for sure if I can dig one of these out. See that little fastener right there? I don't see any evidences in the back panel where they were a head for a screw. It might surprise me, I don't know. If I can get that out of there. Off, didn't I? I'm gonna lay it on its side. Yep, it's a nail. There's no threads on that at all. Sure enough, so that's probably a two inch nail that was used. So this would be the bottom of the second board. The joint would be about right here and we have three nails that have fastened this bottom board on. So it just appears that there's three nails that hold this bottom board in. There's a bolt here. These offset ones, I think, were the repair bolts. These two are centered here. We have one here. There seems to be a nail here. And possibly, most likely, nailed on the top.
There's one thing I appreciated in the design of the rear boards and the side boards is that they purposely staggered the joints so that we don't have double bolts stepping on top of each other. Now some of you may have noticed that I put a nail in between these two bolts here and there's a reason why I did that and it's on the old framings. So this is the old original framework of the driver's box. These are the rear two frames and these are the front two frames. These are the irons that support the seat and on the opposite side you can see there was a nail here. There's evidence that there was a nail here. These are the double bolts over the joints. There's a nail there, there's a nail there. And again, up here in the middle, there's sign of a nail. And on the rear joints, we have a double joint for the side boards and a double joint for the end boards. And we also see evidence that there was a nail here. And on this double board for the sideboard to sideboard, we see there's evidence that there was possibly a nail there. So there's enough of an indication that they did do that. Plus, I wanted to do it to prevent warpage on such a wide board. These are all 11 inch area. And so a, a nail in the center is going to help prevent these boards from warping. So I did leave these sideboards a little proud, a little strong in length. They overhang, oh, a strong eighth of an inch, almost three sixteenths. I'll take a quarter inch round over bit and just take the sharp corners of these edges off. I wanted to be able to disguise the heads of these carriage bolts a little bit as we look directly on the side. It doesn't completely hide them, but just take away from that just true square corner. So anyway, we're making some headway. Appreciate you following along. Thanks for watching.